Well, good morning and welcome to day two of the UK Ports Conference uh, brought to you by Waterfront. What's been happening in the deep sea sector, which of course has been quite dramatic over the last uh, 12 months. And to compare that with what's been happening on short sea. Um, over the last few years, and particularly more recently with COVID, um, even, even the man in the street now realises that to get toilet rolls onto the shelves in the supermarket, there's a fantastic industry uh, working and peddling uh, like hell in the background. I thought really it might be interesting to sort of put a whole new perspective on uh, what Peter and Mike have spoke about before. I mean, Peter's quite right, really. There's never been a time, it's certainly in my very long career, where the logistics and transport and warehouse and shipping has, has been certainly in the, in the forefront minds of, of the government. Ports are absolutely critical to the movement of rail freight. Uh, probably at least half of rail freight in the country goes somewhere near a port at some part on its journey. Uh, so uh, ports are very important to rail freight and those inland links from ports are, of course, absolutely critical. Ports are a critical component part of the overall rail freight offer. I think the starting point for Highways England would be that port connectivity and freight movement is part of our race and DATRA in terms of providing those safe, reliable and effective journeys for freight. And as always in my experience, the good ideas don't come from the boardroom, the good ideas come from the key size. And what I found is port sector should put a little pat on its back because I think actually it's doing a little bit better than most of the maritime sector but there's a lot more ways to go. And that's the biggest challenge for me. Once I get people to understand what the sector is, the excitement about the opportunities within it, that, that's the easy part of the job. And you have to tell the young people about those career opportunities. And if you've got a story to tell, or a video, or a virtual tour, it always hooks them in. If you do allow people to have a progression and opportunities to go forward, and have the qualifications to match that, and have a development programme that people aren't just employed to do one specific job and they're not going to be any um, progression for them. 